Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for October 28, 2023. Please leave a comment, like, and share. And in the news this afternoon, give coroner's court more teeth, sees attorney. Attorney at law and the chairman of Jamaicans for Justice, John Clark, in response to a report by the Independent Commission of Investigations, has concluded that Jamaica must move to empower the coroner's court to make a binding recommendations on the police force. Mr. Clark said the recommendations and the findings from oversight reports must have more teeth in order to hold the public bodies to account. The INICOM report indicates that 14 Jamaicans died in police custody from 2021 to 2022. Mr. Clark said the findings, which are similar to those of past reports, indicate that penal institutions can act with impunity since they are not bound to correct misconduct or other issues brought to the public's attention. In England, he pointed out, when the coroner's court examines the circumstances of a person's death, it can make recommendations and try to ensure these are carried out by the police and the state in the future. We would have had many cases in which um, citizens would have died in police custody. And unlike England, where we have a Middleton inquest where the coroner would examine the situation and try to in ensure that any recommendations are carried out by the police and the state. In Jamaica, what we have are scenarios where in every single time a person dies in custody, or coroner's court are mandated to examine the circumstances. And once they examine them, that report essentially lie on somebody's desk but there's no binding recommendation that would ensure that the death of this unfortunate Jamaican citizen is not just the uh, antecedent for the death of somebody else in the future. Chunk defends a mandatory minimum sentence for capital murder. Justice Minister Delroy Chalk has sought to defend the imposition of a mandatory minimum sentence of 50 years for capital murder, noting that the high rate of homicides remains a serious problem for the country. A joint select committee of parliament is considering the criminal justice bill, which seeks to increase the mandatory minimum sentence for capital murder. Mr. Chuck said while there is no solution to the problem, all avenues for deterrence must be explored. I would be the first to tell you that I don't think even the death penalty, if we decide to reimpose it again, that it is going to solve the problem. But we have to really tackle the problem of murder from all angles because at the end of the day, Jamaica cannot continue to tolerate the level of criminality, violence and murder which we have in the country. And so this Joint Select Committee in its report to Parliament and Parliament when it finally makes their decision need to emphasize that we are trying at least in the question of penalties to send a signal to the country and to potential offenders that what you're doing must stop. Opposition bemoans inhumane conditions at correctional facilities. The opposition is bemoaning what it terms the inhumane conditions at the correctional facilities across the island. Member of the Joint Select Committee considering the Criminal Justice Bill, Donna Scott Motley, says the people who find themselves in any of the country's prisons are subjected to a life-altering experience. The conditions cannot do anything but dehumanize that person. The person who is first apprehended and the person who you see three weeks later are simply not the same person. I think we have to look and see, and I hope that we here will not judge Jamaica's state by the state of the prison, because that would be an indictment on all of us, that we have allowed the social degradation of our country to reach the point where we are reflecting the prison conditions. That, for me, would be extremely sad. How many of our legislators have visited the, the prison and how many understand the extreme level of overcrowding and the inhumane conditions which presently exist? And how many of our legislators understand that with mandatory minimum, you are swelling the prison population? Government Senator Shereen Golden Campbell said the legislature and the executive should be called upon to improve the state of the nation's penal institutions. In 
instituting mandatory minimum sentences. It is relevant what is going to happen to that offender when they enter the penal system because not all of them will sit there and die there. They're going to come back into society. So we, we need to be concerned with what is happening in that process. So our report can include some indication to the parliament that the Joint Select Committee is concerned about the state of the penal system and would wish for the rehabilitative programs there to be robust programs designed to rehabilitate and not to foster a culture where we end up with people coming out of the system being even more of a danger to society than they went in. University graduates among masterminds in cyber attacks. Special Agent Patrick Linton, a cyber forensics expert, and the Director of Cyber Investigations and Risk Management at the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency says that the authorities have been coughing a lot of local players, including brilliant university students who are masterminding the continuous cyber attacks that have been plaguing government systems. Speaking at the Jamaica Cyber Incident Response Team National Cyber Security Awareness Day in St. Andrew on Thursday, Linton said on the investigative side, MOCA has been prosecuting many cases. There are a lot of local players from academia that we have been arresting and they are not stopping. They are leaving university and they are brilliant and some of them will look for the easy way out, he said. He said the law enforcement, which has been able to reduce the attacks, has been studying the patterns of the cyber criminals. They are saying law enforcement can make mistakes all the time, but the criminals only need to make the mistake one time and we have seen many mistakes being made one time, and as a result, between MOCA and the JCF, we have been able to arrest a lot of these players. They continue, but with the driving force and the collaboration, we will be able to reduce these kinds of attacks in our space, Linton declared. Linton, in the meantime, said MOCA, in its role as incident responders, has observed that Jamaica is under continuous attack. When we look at a general mapping, they are bombarding us continuously. We have at least provided some form of resilience. Some of the measures we have implemented, we have been able to mitigate some of these attacks. Some of them have actually been successful. Our aim is to reduce these attacks. We can't alleviate them completely, but we can reduce them by getting our collaborative efforts in place, he said. CDC working to help Salt Spring students recover after murders. Even as the Salt Spring Community Development Committee began looking at ways to help students traumatized by Thursday's double murder outside their school gate, word came that another person was gone down in the neighborhood on Friday. It was the third murder in 12 hours. The CDC, along with other community-based organizations and other stakeholders, are in the process of coming together, forming a supportive team for the school and the parents. And as much of the community that we possibly can reach, CDC representative Sherry K. Morris told the news a Friday afternoon. We will be meeting Friday night with other stakeholders to discuss the things that we want to do going forward, she added. About 1 p.m. on Thursday afternoon, students and the staff of Salt Spring Primary and Infant School had to run for cover after men armed with rifles and handguns shot and killed Imani Jarrett and Odin Smith just the meters from where classes were in session. Most the students wept openly following the traumatic ordeal. Then at 1.10 a.m. on Friday morning, Anthony Forbes, who is also called the Platop or Gummy, was shot and killed by unknown assailants. His son was injured during the incident. Only 14 students out of a possible 170 turned up for classes at the eerily empty primary school on Friday. The infant department had no students and was closed up for the day, according to the news sources. According to the CDC's, Morris plans to visit the school on Friday were shelved because of low attendance, but they will try once more next week. Traumatized the teachers, traumatized the students, and the traumatized community members just wondering what next to do and what next will happen that's basically where we are at, she said. The father of a child enrolled in the primary school told the news that he could not bring himself to send his son to school on Friday, especially with the news of the second shooting. The place tense up and worse it seems like a reprisal shooting, Guan. 
I just let my child stay home, he remarked. Another man said he heard that relatives of the slain Forbes had fled the community with the aid of the police, an indication of just how tense it is in the area. There are concerns that there may be reprisal shootings. Morris told the news that while some parents have expressed a shock at the situation, some remain tight-lipped, afraid to even mention the ongoing challenges. She takes the comfort in the support being provided by the police. Right now, the police presence is there, so the area is calm, she said a Friday afternoon. We are not happy about what is happening, but at the same time, we want to find ways to reach the youth without it having to end up with any more loss of life, she added.